What's going on guys? Welcome back to Orlando Powder Room. Many of y'all already know I'm Chad. And this is my powder coating shop where we specialize in bicycle powder coating. Today I got a quick question for you before we get started. Does anybody recognize this frame? It is obviously not a Mach 1 nor a GT. This is a Diamondback. Uh, mid 80s I believe it was a 86 or 7 I don't know here's the serial number but I don't know if this is a mean streak or a viper or you know whatever other models Diamondback had I'm not real well versed on Diamondback but we ended up with this frame and uh, I'm probably going to powder coat it and see if somebody wants it and if not Maybe I'll give it away. Who knows? I um, uh, we sold this 1991 Dino Detour. This is a detour that a customer bought. And we're going to make this day glow yellow. And then he decided he wanted to do splatter and glow in the dark clear. So we got to get this thing stripped, get the bearing cups knocked out of it. Uh, I got a bunch of other parts for it I got to locate. Uh, I got to take the sprocket off of the old cranks. Uh, also today we are going to powder coat that candy orange 99 GT Performer. So uh, we better get after it. First up is going to be the 1999 Performer. Uh, we're going to do that dark translucent orange on that unit. So first we're going to base it with some chromochrome. Uh, we'll parse, you no, know, we'll fully cure the chromochrome. I'll uh, let it cool. Then we'll put that dark translucent uh, orange on it. So like always, we just fill up our hopper here. Something like that. This is a new one, give her a little fluffing. And uh We'll go and get that 99 started. All right, we got our machine set all the way up to 1999 GT Performer. We're all hung up. We got our ground rocking and rolling. Ready to go. This is our 1991 detour frame. Uh, so we got to make this day glow yellow with the splatter and actual glow in the dark clear. Never done anything like that before, but uh, that's what the customer wants. That's what the customer's going to get. So I got to get these cups knocked out, get the neck uh, stem cups knocked out, get the gyro off. This thing will be heading for the stripper. Uh, with the other parts. Let's knock this cup out real quick. On there. So these cups will get re-powder coated black, the gyro will get re-powder coated black. The customer says he wants it to look like the catalog of the 91 with the day glow. So uh, we're going to do, I believe it was black forks, black bars, 
black sprocket, uh, polished crank arms, uh, the spider, like the, the splash, and then we're going to uh, glow yellow or glow uh, clear over the top of everything. Should be interesting. This is dark translucent orange from Columbia Coating. You notice the label is a little bit fishy. Uh, normally on Columbia's bags, they give you the barcode to reorder it. They give you the instruction, you know, the cure schedule. Uh, if it needs a base or, you know, your recommended mill spec. On this one, it just says dark translucent orange. Nothing else. Uh, it's a discontinued color. So <laughs> I've never shot it before. Never seen it before. I can't think of one thing that'll go wrong. Hopefully it's not completely hideous. But uh, as soon as that thing's out of the oven and back down to room temperature, we're gonna hammer it with the dark translucent orange. All right, so we ran into an issue. This is what came out of the oven. Luckily I opened the oven before it full cured or else we'd have to start over. But because it wasn't full cured, I'm gonna be able to fix this issue. Another coat of chrome, full cure, and then the orange. But as you can see, I never cured the, the repair that I made. So that's that Alvin's metal filler. And if you don't cure it in the oven, you get bubbles and stuff like that because of it letting the rest of the moisture that is in the filler out. And that's what happened. So we outgassed the frame beforehand, made the repair, never cured the, never cured the repair. So luckily I caught it before we full cured it or else uh, another coat of chrome would never stick to the top. But because it was partially cured, uh, it was, it'll still be in between the stages enough where our cross adhesion between the two coats will be okay. So we'll let this get back down to room temperature. I'll sand that out. Uh, we'll put another coat of, uh, no, no, then we'll fully cure. Yeah, we might have a problem. Because if that isn't all of the moisture, it's just gonna happen again. So, we may be in a bit of a pickle. Uh, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna hope that that's all of it and we're gonna sand that off, put another coat on, back in the oven and if it does it again, We'll have to start all the way back at the beginning. And when we strip it, the repair will strip out. We'll have to re-repair it. Uh, re well, first we'll have to re-strip it. Then we'll have to redo the repair. Then we'll have to re-cure it, then re-chrome it. And then uh, the candy orange at the end. So hopefully we get lucky, but it is what it is. So we got that all blended out. And uh, we're gonna shoot another layer of chrome over the top. And we're going to cross our fingers and hopefully it doesn't come back. Because if it does, we're going back to the drawing board. Also, I'm sure a bunch of you are wondering, why don't I just fix that one spot? Why don't I just powder this in that one spot? Well, unfortunately, with powder, with the mill thickness, you can't just do the one spot. Uh, there's, there's no feathering powder coat. Uh, so you have to, I have to reshoot this whole this whole bike for, in order to not see where I started and where I stopped. Uh, it would actually get rough wherever I stopped where the powder didn't have enough molecules to flow out and be smooth. So we gotta reshoot this whole unit and then we'll go orange. OMG! Look how close we were. Ah. But I had an idea, this is what we're gonna do. Instead of starting over and still not knowing what that orange looks like, I'm gonna blow orange over the top of this thing. See if I like it. Or see if y'all like it. See if, some, any, see if it's likable. And then if it is, we'll strip it down, start over. If not, we'll strip it down and put the OG 
tangerine on it. But man, we were so close. Oh well, it is what it is. Unless, all of our logos are still super visible. Oh, that one's starting to look a little funky. Scratch that. I wasn't going to do it again and put another coat of chrome on it, but that chrome gets thick quick. So uh, we're going to do the orange. When it cools, see what it looks like. Pretty interesting to see how this comes out of the oven. Uh, it's very fine. Kind of weird looking. But uh, you never know what you can eat until you cook them. So in the oven it goes. Well, here we have dark translucent orange. I don't know where they got the, uh, the dark from because that's the lightest orange I've ever seen. And it is. Ugly. But uh, we're going to put another coat on it, try to darken it up a little bit. I don't know, we're just playing at this point. We gave it another heavy coat. So we're probably going to start seeing some picture framing and stuff that uh, the candies do when it starts getting thick and weird. Uh, so we're just going to put it in the oven, see how it comes out. with another coat. So right now it's got two coats of uh, two coats of chrome, a coat of uh, the candy dark translucent orange, and a really heavy coat of dark translucent orange. Because uh, it was not even dark, you could still see through it like crazy, which I've seen this happen with one other color. Oh, grass and gold, and it is a nightmare. So, uh, we'll see what this coat looks like. Go from there. All right, the second coat. It's actually starting to come around. It looks way better. Take a look. So, with that being said, I think another coat will actually make it a little more deep, a little darker, and we'll be doing all right. We got our, uh, our logos all still look fine. Everything looks good. We have very minimal picture framing on the dropout. But uh, every time you add a layer of powder coat, the resistance of the positively charged powder in the ground gets higher. So you're more susceptible to what they call back ionization when the electricity builds in one spot and tries to get its way back to the gun. Uh, so you'll get little starbursts and stuff. So we got to start turning our machine further and further down and our powder more and more up so that uh, the powder doesn't get extra charge in one spot and try to jump back to the gun. So just little stuff we have to look out for, but as soon as this cools, She's getting another one. I'm actually starting to like this color. There you go, Trans dark translucent orange. That uh, was a struggle, but it came out pretty awesome after, uh, after all is said and done. I do really like this color now. It started off real shaky. I hated it. But after a couple of heavy coats, it looks sick. I can't wait to put this thing together. If you're interested in this rig right here, shoot me a message. Uh, I will be up for sale as soon as I get it together. Um, the parts, the bars, the forks, the 
gyra, you know, all the other parts that I have for it. Um, we'll get powder coated in a different video. Maybe we'll do an assembly video or something. But uh, go to the Facebook page, take a guess at our uh, free t-shirt Thursday. We did guess the weight of this color display in pounds and ounces. Closest to the pin wins a free t-shirt. Um, Instagram, Orlando, underscore, powder, underscore, room. Go check us out on Instagram. We post a bunch of stuff over there. Facebook is just at powder room. Uh, so again, more stuff over there. Uh, some reels and, you know, Facebook kind of stuff. Don't forget March the 3rd. March 3rd, St. Cloud, Florida. It's going to be a big BMX show doing uh, motos. Old school motos, old school swap meet, uh, old school judged uh, bike contest, all the different categories, everything that goes into a bike show. We're, uh, we're going to be doing giveaways, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so mark your calendars for that. And if you guys are still around, whoever's still watching this, do you want to win this frame? Obviously not in the shape that it's in. Um, I will powder cut it any color that you want. Uh, obviously, we'll all clean it up, powder cut it. I'll fix all the the issues. Uh, this is a Diamondback. Don't even know what frame it is. I'd like to find out. Uh, so if anybody knows what it is, leave a comment below. And I think I'm going to give this away on the YouTube channel. I'll, I'll ship it to you for free. You know, powder coat it, box it up, and ship it to you for free. You can hang it on the wall. You can, you know, find some forks and stuff for it, sell it. You can do whatever you want. Be a cool giveaway. Um, so I'll come up with a, uh, I'll come up with a way for one of you guys to, to own this thing. Why not? Um, so that's pretty much all I got for now. Uh, keep an eye out for the, uh, the day glow yellow splatter frame. It's going to be the first time I tried the splatter pattern. I'm not going to obviously do it right away on the, the frame that's been bought by a customer. I'm going to do it on a on a practice frame but that should be fun learning how to get that splatter uh splatter down and i've really only witnessed it in person you know seen the actual color probably two or three times that i actually paid attention to it so that should be pretty interesting i wish i had one to judge it by but whatever it is what it is uh, that's it for now catch you on the next one